right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Well, it's been a long day, but I'm glad to have an opportunity to be here with you now. When I look at the stats and what you like to watch, what you want to see on this channel in regards to Corvette, that is market news, ordering news. What's going on currently with Corvette? We've got so many new people coming in the marketplace. You guys want to know what's going on. Well, 2024 ordering is starting. And I think somebody said on YouTube, it was here on this channel that E-Ray would be delayed, and in fact it is. Details coming up in just a minute, but how do you like tonight's intro? They say, I'm trying to get better at this YouTube thing, and they say you got to kind of hook your audience at the beginning of your video. Well, how could you not hook a Corvette audience on a Corvette channel with Ron Fellows driving a Z06 Corvette on the track? You got me fired up, man. Thanks for joining us tonight. And at the end of today's upload, our market conversation, others call it brain damage, yeah, they're kind of one of the same. <laughs> We're going to talk, yes, in detail about 2024 ordering for you, but I want to share with you a local charity segment we did last year, and Pelotonia is about to start again. When you see that 100%, that means every dollar you donate goes directly to cancer research. We have a little bit of good news, too, while we talk to our friend Chuck. So let's talk some Corvette market news. Ordering, trying to get yourself a new Corvette, whether it's a Stingray, a Z06, or now the E-Ray available for 2024. This was kind of a shocker. Today was the last time uh, we didn't expect it, wasn't told in advance, just surprise, here you go, Z06 is to order. There was just a few out there. I didn't get any, so I really don't care about that, but I just, I wanted to share that with you so you know what's going on in the marketplace. Here's another important thing. They've extended 23 production through September 12th now rather than September 1st. So it may be one of the biggest production model years ever, but it'll have a little asterisk. Yes, it'll have one of these little deals right there because they've extended it by, what, an additional eight weeks? But it's still great times. But crazy times, demanding times that are real for this new car. Here we are in the fourth model year. I still don't have a car available for you to walk in and buy and take home. It's all about ordering, and that's why we're going to have this conversation tonight. So in regards to 2024, we've told you before, I haven't went through the detailed stuff that I want to. I know some other places have shared some stuff, so you get an idea what's available in these packages, what are some of the options, and what are some of the changes and delete from 23 going into 24. 24 vehicle order guide is now live. The build your own tool. I'm so excited. Thank you Chevrolet for doing that. I don't know what the heck was going on in years past. The cars would be ordered, the cars were building, and still you go to Chevrolet.com and you're like, what? I can't. Okay, you've got this model year car coming, but it's got two years old car. What is going on? Finally, they're ahead of the game. So if you go to Chevrolet.com, then click on the Vehicles tab, then go to Performance tab, and then pick one of the three models. Stingray, Z06, and you can see here, I was playing around with the E-Ray. Yes, that's the cacti color. Pick your wheels, pick your options, really play around with that a lot. That's a great tool. Pricing is live on there for you as well. And what I'd like to do is have you guys play around with that to get familiar with the car, generate some questions. So when it is time to finalize your order, you have a pretty good idea. I review that with you guys. I make some suggestions and then we finalize it. We spec it, we pat it. And yes, we get that allocation on the way to Bowling Green so we can get you behind the wheel. Now, hang on a second. I know, you guys are saying, wait a minute, Rick, you made that sound way too easy. I'm sorry, because it, does, it doesn't happen like that. It's supposed to, but it doesn't. I don't think it ever will. That's why we're going to have this conversation with you tonight. Also, it's important to know that 24 ordering, the start of retail production, is also September 12th when 23 ends. So there'll be just a few cars probably in the first shift ending 23, and then the second shift, I'm assuming, will start 24. So it's going to be uh, pretty much a rolling change, if you will, going from 23 to 24 Corvette. So why is today so important? Well, today we got the estimate ship report. We can't release any allocations, but it lets us know what's coming up next week for allocations. How many cars we actually have to order? Because up until this point, we had no idea. And that's how it is month over month. We have allocations for Corvette Stingray. We have them for Z06 and E-Ray. And as I said, it probably would. Not to the degree I said it would, but it is going to be delayed. Here's what's going on now. Today, July 20th, we did get estimated shipments for Stingray. We know how many we can order next week. Low quantities. And I said that was going to be the case for startup. Like I said, anybody that gets an allocation released in July or August, your cars are going to show up pretty much at the same time, okay? Z06, there were estimated shipments for ordering for the first cycle for 24 as well, and there was a big fat goose egg for E-Ray because that's not ready to go. We'll see those estimated ships on August 10th. 
And as I just mentioned, in case you missed it, we get estimated ship report, how many cars we can order, not constraints, just how many quantity we can order in the following cycle. So the estimated ships for E-Ray will be August 10th. The first order cycle will be August 17th. So here's what happens when we get an order cycle. All right, so we just told you, we get the estimated ship report as we did today, how many cars we can order in the following week within these groupings. And it's weird too, because we have three new groupings now. We have Corvette that's listed as C-O-R-V-E-T-T, C-O-R-Z-06, and C-O-R-E-R-Y for E-Ray. Are these gonna go in a cycle one or cycle two? We're kind of off kilter right now for the startup late in July. So we'll see how August plays out. We'll talk more about that next month. So on Thursday, as it is today, we know how many cars we can order next week. And then next week, we actually find out the constraints. So don't think right now we know that. So there could still be some orders that would be legit up, ready to be placed, but we can't place it because maybe something you want in that car is on constraint. And as you know, and as we share here on the channel, they change month over month. It could be wheels, color, suspension. It could be a number of things. And at startup, some of the new colors, well, those could be on constraint too. We'll let you know when we get that information. Usually don't do videos on that, but I think because it's the startup of 24, even next month, we'll do the update on estimated shipments and what's going on in the marketplace, what would be on constraint, what may not be, and actually what those quantities are. So. We'll probably do a video next week for you guys as well. Just have to see what's going on. So you get the allocation quantities. You're now on allocation day on that Thursday. You already know how many cars you got coming. Now you get the report on constraints. You have that Thursday and Friday to contact your customers to have buildable orders in the system, tag the orders you want released based on what Chevy tells you. If they tell you you get five cars, your first five cars in your order system better be acceptable orders you could cost yourself an allocation. So you get, that's all dealer stuff. You don't need to know about that. You as a customer, make sure you have a buildable order within constraints. You have Thursday or Friday to tag those orders as a dealership. The batch processing system from General Motors will take those orders and put them into what's gonna be a place tab. We'll see that again on Tuesday. Tuesday is the last day for us and for you to make any final changes. And at that point, within constraints, you could change it from a coupe to a convertible. You can change the color, whatever you want. But after Tuesday, you can't touch the order anymore and I tell you guys that very explicitly and then uh, yeah I still get calls Wednesday morning when I'm off headed to the doctors yeah I'd like to change the seatbelt and maybe the wheel well no you can't <laughs> if you want the order to actually go to General Motors and get built and scheduled you got to leave it alone that's why they give us the point of no return it's the same for you guys too so after that Tuesday game over you go to 3000 status and then we just wait for the process to actually complete and then you're driving your car Again, sounds easy, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to get you to that point. There's, and that's, that's why I've got these boards up here now. There's a lot of people waiting that we have 23 requests because of whatever reason. Here's the other thing. Besides the constraints, the allocations I talk about are so wildly inconsistent, and 23 was just proof positive of that. No allocations in April, no allocations in June for Stingray. Do you, oh, we gave you a couple Z06s. I still needed the 2030 Stingrays. That upset the apple cart so much for us and for our customers. It's very difficult. So you can get none to a ton. They're so inconsistent, and we do not know those numbers until we actually get the estimated ship report. And then we can start planning for the allocation cycle because we only can do orders once a month. Again, they may break up into two different cycles, breaking out one of the models into cycle two or maybe two of the models into cycle two, but regardless, it's once a month, that's it. So that's why there's such a, a wait and such a process. And we've told you it's worth the wait, it really is. Understanding the process, understanding in advance that there is a wait. For a guy not to tell you, taking your order, that there's not a wait, that there could be a delay, that there could be product constraints, pieces, parts, colors, wheels, whatever, not to tell you that, it's not fair to you as a consumer. So what we've got going on right now is a very slow start to 24. We've got some 23 requests that I gotta carry over to 24. Again, not knowing if we can even place some of these orders because we don't know the constraints until next week. All I know is how many cars I'll have to order for next week. We've got these different categories. I'm not sure how they're gonna break out either as far as what the percentage is gonna be. We talked about that about six months ago. Where's the focus gonna be? You know, everybody's like all freaked out because we have three models. Hey, if you remember in C7, we had Stingray, we had Grand Sport, we had Z06, and we had ZR1. We've only got three right now. In regards to ZR1 for C8, yes, it's coming. Could it be delayed? Quite possibly. 
Is it going to be more magnificent than you ever imagined? Oh yeah, it will be, man. Um, I can't say anything, but hang on. That is going to be a um, that is going to be a different Corvette. That is going to be. Uh, I don't want to say this wrong. I think it's going to be a a more upper echelon car. I think. Do you know what I mean on that? Okay, it's, we'll leave it right there. A lot of time to talk about ZR1. So we're going to see how these break out. We'll watch the percentages very, very closely. I'm going to watch the 24 requests. We can take all these requests. When you guys get an order number, uh, how do I say this? It means absolutely nothing. It gives you that false sense of security. Some of you are hanging on to order numbers that are a year old. And guess what? How's your car drive? That's right, you don't have it. The order number means nothing until it gets to what we're talking about tonight. Past the estimated ships, past the allocation cycle, actually tagged and released, then it's a real car. So hang tight. We've got a lot of time to get that in there for you guys. We've got a lot of transfer stuff going on. I told you I've got a lot of emails I still have to get back yet, but thankfully we still have time. And I appreciate your time and I appreciate your understanding and I appreciate the patience. We both need that. I. You guys get frustrated? I get twice as frustrated with Chevrolet. <laughs> you just don't hear it, and you just, well, you see a little bit, of it, but you just don't, you don't see it all. <laughs> and that's probably a good thing. But again, I gotta thank everybody for the request directly with me. Going on my 29th year representing Corvette, I am so proud to own one and to be here for you guys because at the end of the day, through all this drama, this is something really special in our lives. It really is. And it's something that I encourage you to do constantly. Don't let it set. Drive it and enjoy it. That's what you work for. But with me, I'm one of 17 guys here at our dealership that are selling this car now. Everybody wants a piece of Corvette. I get the most allocations for us, but I still have to go through a lot of protocol, a lot of push-ups, and we're not, because the alloc I don't want to get into this too much, maybe we should at some point, the allocation process and the distribution from the manufacturer to the dealership has changed over the years. And we're not getting the cars that we earned, and we never will. So now we have to juggle and look at, we have to look at each situation before we're approving and releasing an allocation. So sometimes there's a little bit of delay in that, just having conversations and what we can do and what, what we can't do. So thank you again for that. So these 24 requests continue to come in. We've got some time. You're gonna run, this is the time of the year too. You're gonna run into a little bit of a, of a hiccup because you got the holidays coming, you got the end of the year coming. So, uh, and they've got a late start now, mid-September. So you're not gonna see cars till, pro you probably won't see cars until, yet yeah, maybe the last week of September, but probably the first week of October, I think is a fair statement, okay? And then E-Ray, I think you probably won't see any of those on the ground actually driving by you guys, not by General Motors executives, uh, probably November, I think, because with a new model like that, just like it was in Z06, it's done and it's got to go through extra validation before they release it to the customer, make sure everything is A-OK. -okay. And at the end of the day, that's exactly what you want. I mean, if it takes a little bit of extra time before it delivers to you, then go ahead, take all the time you need, but just give me a good car, all right? Couple of shows to remind you about. We will be with some prizes and an opportunity to meet you guys and possibly add you to the list for a 24, 25, 26 Corvette. I get, <laughs> I got it just popped in my head. I got to tell you this. I actually had a guy call me the other day. I didn't think I would have to right now in 2023. I almost forgot what year it is. <laughs> I just keep getting my head kicked in. This guy goes, Rick, I want to be the first guy on your C9 list. I said, huh? It's like, what? Um, okay. Take down name, phone number, email. Don't, it just, then here comes, well, what colors do you think you're going to have? I don't know. I don't care. doesn't matter. This is why we're going to go down this rabbit hole and have this conversation that is endless and meaningless to both of us right now. You're five, six years away, man. If I'm alive, then we'll talk about it. C9, I have my first official request for C9. <laughs> it's crazy. What the heck was I talking about? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. It's like, Rick, you're all over the place. It's been a long day, man. Uh, show we're gonna be at, an opportunity to talk about lists and stuff is Corvettes at Corsa. It's a great event. It's the last Sunday of July. It's always the last Sunday in July. It's held at the Corsa Performance Facility in Berea, Ohio, brought to you by Corvette Cleveland. There'll be 300 plus Corvettes there. They're gonna raise money for charity. And they've got, I don't, oh, you know what? I don't have it here in the office. Anyways, it's a Corvette exhaust tip mounted on a base. And it is, 
It is, to my opinion anyways, I think it's one of the coolest trophies out there for a Corvette show. A week from this Sunday, the last Sunday in July, Berea, Ohio, come by and see me, sign up to win some Corvette prizes, and maybe we can talk some business too, so thank you so much. And I'll have some free posters of uh, Ricky's, uh, I don't know if you can see it up there, of my C8, and we've got some green Z06 posters that we had here at Coughlin last year when the Z06 tour was here. So if you want some of those for keepsake to put up in your little man cave, well, we'll have those for you absolutely free next weekend at Corsa. Another show I'm going to be at right here in Ohio. Information is up on the screen. The Real Church Car and Bike Show. They do so much. This is a family-oriented show, so bring the kids, the grandkids. There's going to be live zoo animals from the Columbus Zoo. There's going to be bouncy houses. There's going to be food trucks, and there's going to be a lot of cool cars and cool bikes, and it's a great time for just three hours. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us. I love having a direct, candid conversation, some stuff that comes from my heart, comes from the gut, but also, too, what is factual going on with General Motors in relationship to the dealerships, which directly affect you guys. I know some of this sometimes is a little confusing, but I just try to give it to you as simply as I possibly can so you understand that there is a process, that there is a delay, but I don't anticipate it to be as long as what it has been over the last four years for this new C8. So thanks for the business considerations. Before you go tonight, let's talk about some good works that are going on in our backyard in regards to Pelotonia. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for this segment. Chuck, thanks for joining us. And, uh, hey, thanks for having me, Rick. Are you comfy, sir? In your cab, how can I not be comfy? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, did you ride the bike or drive the car today? I drove the car today. Okay. Although the bike is really going to be the point of the conversation today yes, it is. absolutely obviously look at look at that shirt right there look at that hat right there yes we're talking peloton and a fight against cancer but real quick this is a corvette channel you've got a kick-ass looking car let's show off your car real quick all right let's do it all right not quite like the old days right chucky no i mean there's there's three four cars three here cars. we get we get excited yeah it's it's far cry from the 75 to 100 that we're uh, used to but down here is chuck's car here from ohio look at oh my god look at these wheels what kind of wheels are those forge lines? Oh, These monoblocks. That is beautiful. Forged. We talked about this last year when we were doing some promotion and yeah. creating awareness for Peloton. You talked about your car, how you love your car, and you drive your car all over the country. Yes, I do. That's fantastic. That's what they're meant for, like you said. Yeah. Drive your car. Yeah, Don't that's right. See, he gets it. Are you guys listening? Pay attention here. Look at this thing. Just had to show you this real quick. This is really, really neat. And it's nice to have Chuck here because over the years, you, you've been a great customer for Coughlin. And through that relationship, becomes a friendship. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it becomes more than just car conversations. Now we start knowing each other personally and personal lives. And everybody watching right now has been affected or knows somebody affected with cancer. And that's why I'm cancer. so happy to help create some awareness. When you talk 100% of the proceeds go to Cancer Research, that is the organization that you want to talk about today. So Absolutely. if you would, go right ahead. The event's coming up here real soon. Yep, it's coming up August 4th, 5th, and 6th. Uh, this is my 10th year riding in it. It's actually the 15th year since it was incepted. Okay. But in 15 years, they have raised over $260 million. And right. when this says 100%, it is 100% of every penny. Yeah. that is donated to this cause doesn't go in some middleman's pocket or the right we all get those calls and it, sure. if they see a dime off of you know a dollar they're lucky but this gives every penny to it and they're doing so much i mean they just opened up a new immuno uh immunotherapy and immunocology division they put the building up we pledged over 102 million dollars from pelotonia wow to take and build that and they have some of the brightest minds they've just brought in in the country and actually probably from around the world but james is recognized as basically the number one cancer facility in the country and possibly the world i'm, I'm not sure but it's that's right here in columbus right here in columbus oh, ohio that's amazing and you, you can't ask for anything more than that but uh they are making great strides they you, are. Even, you even yeah. have a family member that's actually yes. has a little yes. success story well last year as you remember when you we did our little thing across the street at the bike shop yes i was talking about my sister-in-law had Part of a lung removed, she also then started a chemo and just the first reaction to it. She had narcolepsy come up, so they switched to immunotherapy. She did a year of immunotherapy. She actually had her last treatment in June. She had a scan last Friday, met with her oncologist yesterday. And one of the things that cancer patients, when you beat cancer, they all have a bell you ring. 
Ring she the got bell. to ring the bell, man. Oh, it's so that's wonderful great. to, you know, she now can try and go back and live a normal life. I mean, you're still in the back of your mind. Once you've sure. had cancer, it, you're going to think a little right. differently about stuff. But I'm so happy for her and my brother. Uh, but it's not just her. There's there's thousands and thousands of people out there, kids, adults. It doesn't matter. Uh, right. They're all fighting it. And like you said, Everybody's been affected in one way or another. You Absolutely. know somebody, it's sure. family, it's friend, and to have something that you know can try and make a difference. And will we have the cure? I sure hope so. That's why we're out there pedaling our butts off. Right. Uh, I mean, like I say, I've done it for ten years. I just had a knee replace <laughs> in February, and I've already put a thousand miles training on that oh, already. Wow. How many are you gonna ride this year? I know there's different divisions, yeah, groupings I'm, that you I'm do. I'm gonna do the 137 miles this year. So it's wow. 100 miles on Saturday, and then Sunday we do a 37 mile ride. Wow. But you've got people that are riding up to 200 miles, and they added another event this year. It's called a gravel event. So the guys would like to get on their BMX bikes. Oh and gosh, oh, the mountain that. bikes and stuff like yeah. that? Oh, wow. Well, they, they can have that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old for that, I don't need to be falling down in rocks and right. all that but exactly it's another means again every penny that's raised through that event also goes directly to the cause to take and you know find the cure well we know what a tragedy cancer is and it's great to hear those little success stories and it's good to hear that the money that is going to pelotonia they are getting some results yes they are so absolutely don't give up no. you guys if you're watching right now you want to help out uh, this is going to go specifically to the james facility that we're talking about yep. there'll be a link down below that you can click that you can donate many of you did last year i appreciate Appreciate yes, you doing that. Thank you so much, those of you who did donate. And hopefully this year more of you will see this and get on the train with us and, you know, get on Team Chuck. That's yeah. what I call my team is yeah. Team Chuck. Team and, Chuck, all right. You know, love my Corvette, love my, my bicycle to ride. And here right now, I'm probably riding the bike more than driving the car. But like Ricky said, we've been out west. We've been to the national parks with all my Corvettes and yeah. going to continue to do it because, like you say, drive them that's it's what not, they're made it's not just bikes it's not just cars it's the love of life yeah, so absolutely uh,